G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Today I've got a pretty fun tutorial to share with you. Um, it's something that's come out very recently, but I'm going to show you how you can create your own custom assets for Enscape in Revit. So pretty fun. As you can tell with the thumbnail, we're going to have a bit of fun here. So Enscape, for those that aren't aware of it, is a real-time rendering plugin, um, and it works in a lot of really popular programs like Revit, ArchiCAD, SketchUp, Rhino 3D. Um, and it's a really great rendering tool. It's probably my favorite just because of how easy it is to use and how quick it is to set up a scene. And because it's real time, it means you can move around your model with clients or you can record videos. It's a very flexible tool. Now it's not a free program, but having said that, it's not that expensive, at least in the Western world where I live. So for me, it's one of the best tools of its kind, especially if you're a Revit user. Um, so you'll get great value for money from it if you can find a way to obtain value. I get a lot myself. So for those that haven't used it, it uses 3D proxy objects. In Revit, they get dumped in as a little light family and Enscape swaps these out for a high resolution model. And the assets that we build today will be similar. They'll have a box around them and they get subbed out for a higher resolution model. So it's great because you don't have to add the full weight of those objects to your Revit model. In version 2.9 of Enscape, which has come out, I think today, um, we can now load in custom assets, so really exciting. And it's been long overdue, this feature, um, but it's obviously taken a lot of work to set up. So this is something that we'll be, we'll be aiming for. Um, I'm a huge Batman fan, so the first thing I wanted to do was bring in the Batmobile and then bring in Batman. And I'm just going to show you some of the steps and tricks and tips you can use uh, to clean up a model and also to get it in. And I'll show you how the uh, custom asset uh, loading process looks like. Uh, so that you can do it as well. But it's going to be a little bit of cleanup here and there. Like you'll need to find a pretty good quality model that you can use. In my case, I found a model in the Blender format, um, which is pretty great because it has a skeleton rig to it. Um, so I'll show you it really quickly. Um, now, ideally, if you can find something in OBJ um, or FBX, that's probably the best format um, because eventually you'll probably use an OBJ in Enscape itself. This is the uh, the model that I found in Blender itself. Um, I couldn't find a way to get the materials to come out with it. I don't believe that the author attached the materials to the object, as far as I could tell. Um, but it's pretty cool because it's a fully rigged, a fully rigged model that you know I can do whatever. So if I want Batman to be kicking someone, <laughs> I can. Um, but really, mostly what I did in here, I'm not a really big Blender user. I really respect the program, but I'm still learning it. Um, so at the moment, really all I did was just export it. And in this case, I just exported it as a Wavefront OBJ. Um, and in this case, I might just export this to uh, probably just my desktop, actually. Um, so in this case, I'll probably, yeah, I'll just save it to my C drive, actually. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll go desktop. So I'm just going to call this um, newbatman.obj. So you might not have to worry about this step, but I actually found a native Blender object. Okay, so th th there's a lot of programs you can use to edit OBJ files. Um, some of you might use 3ds Max. Personally, I'm more comfortable using Rhino 3D and I find it's a great program because it can read a lot of different file formats. Um, so the next step that I took here was actually to bring this model into Rhino and do a lot of things to it. Um, so add materials, because eventually the material assignment is how you'll control the asset in Enscape itself. So you do have to make sure materials are assigned properly. So in this case, I'm just gonna switch over to Rhino and Rhino is great because you can import nearly every file format under the sun, I swear. There's so many file formats that Rhino supports. So I'm just gonna bring in this OBJ for new Batman. I'm just gonna go with the default settings. And there's Batman. So sometimes things might come in in the wrong orientation. So what I like to do is just open up all my viewports and just get him into position. You can hold down shift in most programs to lock things to a fixed aspect of rotation. And I'm just trying to get him pretty much onto the origin. So that when I bring him into Enscape, he's gonna be sitting on his origin as well. There we go. So now I'm pretty much just dealing with a model at this point. Now, there are quite a few types of elements here. There's a lot of curves that come in from a Blender OBJ import, at least in this case there are. So what I like to do here is do a selection filter. And I just, I only wanna deal with curves for now when I select things. So I'm gonna turn off all these categories except for curves. And I'm just going to select all the curves and delete them. And what I should be left with is the, the, the meshes that make up this component. Now, at the moment, it's just a single open mesh. I'm going to explode it. And sometimes you might be fortunate in that the meshes break down into clean pieces. Because someone rigged this element, they had to set up all these pieces um, separately. So I'm quite fortunate here that it's actually a very clean model to work with. So quite an easy model. In this case, there's also a cut plane um, going through the elements. So I just want to get rid of that. I think that might even be my working plane that I started with originally. So now I'm just dealing with Batman himself. Um, so if you're in Rhino as well, sometimes it's easier to work in rendered mode. 
And obviously at the moment there's no materials, or at least it doesn't look like there's any materials. Um, if I go to the materials in Rhino, there's actually heaps of materials, and it can be quite hard to find out what the materials are assigned to. If I right click on one of them and say, select objects, I can see what materials are assigned to which. Now in this case, I can see there's a few different like sort of highlight points, um, but to be honest, I'm probably not really gonna be working with these pieces. So I'm just gonna make them all one material essentially. So I'm just gonna select everything. I'm gonna pick uh, one material here and I'm just gonna to assign to objects. And now I've only got this material for my entire scene. At this point, I can just start creating new materials. Now by default, I might say, uh, that this is going to be his suit because obviously the suit is a material. Uh, where's the rename? Can't see it. Ah, down here, of course. So I'm just going to rename this to suit. Now I'm not going to do every single step here because we'd be here for a long time, obviously. But at this point, you can just start adding more materials. Um, so for example, maybe you want might want for cow and cape, and then you can start isolating certain elements. And if you make these things slightly different colors you'll be able to tell sort of roughly how you've assigned all the materials. And you do want to separate them by how you want to break down the materials. Now, if you've got an OBJ file that's already got maps and UVs and everything set up, that comes in pretty cleanly to Enscape. This is only if you have something that's not really that clean in how it's been set up. But I can just go and keep assigning these to objects and start finding you know, how the materials are assigned to this particular element. But again, I was quite lucky in this case because um, things were quite clean in this, um, this Blender element. Now I can always select objects and hide as well. Oop. Might have to go up to the command line. Just so you can start picking like back faces and certain elements that might be a little bit harder to find. And you can see that it's quite easy to sort of start just setting up all these elements. And you may sometimes need to do certain aspects to the mesh. For example, here I can't isolate his, his full boot. Um, so in this case, I did do like an intersection with the mesh and actually raised that piece of the mesh a little bit higher using Grasshopper. Um, I also had to do some things like I projected a Batman symbol onto his chest and pushed it out a little bit. So that in, in um, the Enscape, you can see a Batman symbol on him. So sometimes you might need to make some modifications to, to the model, um, but ultimately you're gonna end up with something that looks a little bit like, uh, I'll just find the one that I finished. Uh, in this case, Probably just need to navigate to where I saved it. Uh, just bear with me. So I think I had one for the Batmobile and I had one for Batman. So this is my final working model um, after I'd made some changes to it. it. Should just be opening now. And I'll just show you mainly so you can see the way the materials have been assigned. There we go. So that's when I was finished um, with everything. And you can see I've set up a material for every aspect of. Um, of the, the model. So for example, I didn't end up giving him his classic underpants in the end, um, but that's okay. Um, and you can see like pretty much everything is set up. Um, here and there, there are some anomalies in the way that it's been set up. Obviously I could go back and fix up the rigging in Blender and take it back through. But at this point, this is essentially gonna be the way my materials are controlled in Enscape itself. So this is an OBJ, so I've, I've exported it out. Um, export selected. And then I've just set it to a OBJ. And this will export, export him out in a format that I can work with um, in Enscape. So this is Enscape 2.9. I'm just in a sample project at the moment. Um, if I just go to Enscape Asset Library, there'll be a new tab in the Asset Library. If you've used Enscape before, this is gonna be different. So I'm currently in the Custom Assets tab. So you've got your standard Enscape assets, which there's more assets again, they've added more to the library, which is pretty cool. But in this case, you can see I've been making some custom ones. And you can also obviously see you can generate thumbnails, give them names, give them descriptions. I'm gonna make a new asset. Now, if this, is first, if this is the first time you've created a custom asset, it might prompt you to save uh, a standard library or project location. Uh, whilst you're in the custom asset uh, library, um, essentially you can't work in the Enscape asset library itself, but they give you this really convenient button to switch to the custom asset editor. And at this point, I'm just creating a new project and I'm just gonna give it a name. So I'm just gonna call this uh, Batman Demo 2. And I'm just gonna begin by importing geometry. So at this point, I'm essentially just looking for that model that I've set up. So in this case, it's called Batman Final. And hopefully if you've worked to meters, which is usually a better unit, you'll see that the geometry will come in and you can sort of just pan around this thumbnail if you need to, but it's important to check the scale. So at the moment, Batman's eight meters tall. A little bit too tall, so I'm gonna go down to two. 
and everything should scale retrospectively. So the X and the, and the Z value should also catch up, hopefully. There we go. So I can see now that I'm dealing with a, a two meter tall Batman, hopefully. There we go. So he's a little bit shorter. Now I found this can be a little bit hard to navigate, like the zoom wheel can be a bit slow. If you hold down control, um, you'll move around faster, essentially. So I find that if you hold down, um, sorry, shift or control, they sort of let you fly around much quicker. Now you can see I've made a couple of errors here, like the Batman symbol doesn't push out quite far enough. So make sure you keep your source file if you want to make changes to it. But you can see now that we've broken this element down by material. So this is why it's really important to set your material separately. And you can also add things like textures as well. So let's say in the case of his suit, we want to add a texture. And I've just found the fabric texture. And I can set this. Now obviously that looks really bad. And I've, I haven't found a way to scale the texture yet. I'm not sure if you might need this, the, the texture to be actually sized to suit the wrapping of the element. This might be just doing a single UV over the entire mesh. That's my guess of probably what's happening. In this case, I just made it quite faint um, and gave it a base color. As well as this, you can also um, change things like its transparency and whether it emits light. Um, and also you can change the, the uh, textures of the element. If you want to have displacement or bump, you can modify the height map. And as well as this, you can also change how rough it is. Obviously the less rough it is, the more reflective or shiny the element will be. Um, and you can also make it also quite metallic as well if you want them to be more sort of steely. Um, but in this case, obviously that doesn't really make too much sense. So as you go through each asset, you can just go and update each, each component um, by layer. I think in the case of the skin, I actually found a, a skin map as well, just to make his skin look a little bit more textured. Um, in the case of his eyes, I made those separate. And that was so I could actually add self-illumination to make his eyes glow. And this will make them glow at night as well. So you'll actually see his eyes change color at night, which is pretty cool. You can change the intensity of that as well. And also just the base color um, that that represents during the day. But otherwise I'm not gonna spend too long uh, modifying all these values. I think I just took a little bit of roughness out of the suit and made it ever so slightly metallic. And same with the boots. And I'll make his belt quite metallic just so you can see what it looks like when you have quite a metallic asset. There we go. So at this point, um, we're pretty happy with it. Um, what you do need to do first is set the thumbnail of the element. So you can just hit this, take a screenshot button. And that becomes the thumbnail for your asset from that point onwards. Even if you move around just to look at it, that will still be your thumbnail. You can also add a description if you like as well. Um, but at this point, you'll need to save this out as a project so that you can open up the asset later on. Um, in this case, I'm just gonna call this, um, probably just demo Batman. And I'm just gonna save this in here. Now we can now generate our asset. And that's actually gonna go and make the asset in the asset browser. So if I come back here, I can now see um, once this loads that I now have this demonstration Batman asset. Pretty cool. Um, I'm just gonna go and place one just so you can see what it looks like. And then we'll open up Enscape. So in this case, I'm just gonna make sure I'm placing him on ground floor. And you may wish to add just a few more assets. In this case, I'm just gonna add um, the Batman that I prepared earlier. Um, so you can see just how, how much more detail can be introduced. Uh, but obviously a big component here is having a good source model to work with. And if you have an FBX model that already is set up, I mean, you're gonna save a lot of time because that can potentially just come in as is. Um, there is a poly count limit. I've noticed, I think it's uh, 20,000 polys. After that, it gets quite slow. Um, so you will possibly need to reduce the complexity of the element. Uh, but let's just jump in and begin rendering in Enscape. Obviously they're boxes now, but in Enscape, it's gonna swap it out for that asset that we've built. So pretty exciting. And I mean, this is an amazing feature. It's gonna really change um, how we can set up scenes in Enscape. We're no longer limited to the furniture or the people that Enscape gives us. And if you've got a really good 3D Max library of content, um, now you can bring it to Enscape. So pretty, pretty funky. Uh, so I'll just, um, just double click to fly over to these guys and check it out. I think the one on the left I built first, and this is the one that I built second with the yellow eyes. But I mean, you can see there's a really great amount of detail. If you can get a detailed model, and I, I did really minimal work to change this element. So there's actually things that are mapped. In this case, you can see that there's even like textures that have been mapped originally to this element. So sometimes some of this work is already done for you, which is pretty cool. Now, obviously make sure if you're doing this for a professional purpose, check the license of the optic that you're using. Make sure it's not a, say a, a non-royalty free asset if you're gonna use it for commercial purposes. 
Um, in this case, these ones were licensed for personal use. Um, so I'm not gonna use them obviously in a job that generates me money. Um, but at this, in, in this case, I'm just using it as a demonstration. Now, if you've added light materials um, to say the eyes of Batman, check it out when we get at nighttime, the eyes glow, pretty cool, right? So like you can even add lights to these elements. So I've added headlights in this case to this Batmobile, um, which is pretty amazing. So, I mean, this is just a, it's just a game changer for Enscape users. This is really gonna impact how we can work um, using the program. And I mean, obviously it's just fun too. You can bring all sorts of zany models into your Enscape experience now. And I mean, it's a pretty good result. I mean, this wasn't like a super detailed model and even from a distance, it's still, you know, they're still, they're still pretty great. Um, so really great feature. I um, really look forward to seeing what people can do uh, with these new asset controls. And um, thanks to the team for implementing this really great feature. Um, very exciting and um, obviously I'm going to be using this a lot more in future as well So yeah, we've um, we've been through it now. I'm gonna put um in this case I probably won't put the content itself on github given that it's only for personal use I'll probably put the um the Enscape asset project, um, but obviously in this case you can't really use this for commercial purposes um, But do, do feel free to use it just to test it out and I look forward to seeing what you can make as well So thanks for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this um off program video and um, again thanks to the team and I look forward to showing you some more tricks in Enscape in future as well. If you're not already following and subscribing feel free to do so and I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Thanks, take care.